Hello and welcome to After Before Friday, week number 27. This week I'm surprising my husband and editing a photo that he took with his iPhone 6 while in New York City about a month ago. It is filled with so many iconic New York City symbols and the composition is wonderful that I just had to play around with it. Um, the symbols, we've got the Brooklyn Bridge, Jane's Carousel in the middle, One World Trade Center, uh, New York City Fire Department Fireboat. He's got this wonderful leading lines of the, the breakwater. So I wanted to try and work some magic. And the first thing as I look at the picture, besides it being dark and, and not very contrasty, is um, I wanted to get rid of this gentleman here. I knew um, as I worked on the photo that I was going to get rid of him here since he's basically cut in half. And I figured while I'm doing that, I'm going to get rid of this yellow sticker here because it seems to draw my eye. Um, so as I begin, um, the first thing I, I'm going to do is um, I hit auto and see what that happens in terms of the white balance. And it warms it up. And um, I, I liked that setting. So from there, I moved on to the exposure. And um, I dialed in a bit of exposure to, to uh, bring up some more of the details in the photo. And then I'm going to bring down the contrast just a bit. And then next I deal with um, the highlights. And I played with it and I brought down the highlights quite a fair bit. Um, and then in terms of shadows, I'm going to open them up. And this brightens the whole picture up and brings out details, more details in the rocks and the trees. And then I'm going to, um, my black is just about at the clipping point, but I'm going to bring it down just a hair. Um, and from here, I'm going to boost my clarity, which is a bit of micro contrast, gives it a bit more, more punch um, and makes it a little bit darker, hence the, um, the adjustment of the highlights and the shadows um, all, all play in with the clarity slider. And then I'm all also going to come down into the tone curve and I'm going to choose medium contrast. And that gives it a bit more punch and darkens it up just a little bit. Um, the detail panel, I'll come down and sharpening. I'm going to come over to my sharpen presets and sharpen scenic. This is one that came with Lightroom. Um, and I'm going to apply that. And you can tell a little bit. Um, it's not it's it's not a, a huge effect, but but it's it's enough on on this iPhone photo to give it uh, just a little bit more uh, more detail. And then um, from here, the the carousel is the main viewpoint for me. So I played with putting in a radial filter actually two, and oftentimes what I'll do, I, I duplicate them. So I, I drag and pull to get the size that I want, and I wanted just about here. And what I want to do is um, I want to create um, a filter that will uh, decrease the exposure um, around the perimeter of, of the, the um, radial filter. So. I'm going to first decrease exposure. I'm going to uncheck invert mask and let's zero everything out here. And I'm going to bring the exposure down to about 30. I had it to about 32 in my original uh, steps. Now that darkens um, around, but what I want to do is I want to highlight the area of the carousel. So I'm going to right click on my mouse it brings up this menu and I'm going to duplicate. Now the, the photo is going to get dark yet again, but here's the trick. I come over and I'm going to click invert mask so that the effect that I apply will be on the inside of the filter. And I'm going to boost the exposure to 49. And as, you'll do, as I do, you will see that the inside um, lightens up. And then I'm going to click done. So, so far, let me take you back here. Here's, here's the original. And here's where we are at this point. Okay, now it's far from being done. Um, I did 
use, and I will show you, but I'm not going to do the complete process. I did use Lightroom spot removal tool um, to do some general spot removal. And it's, it's good, but in this instance, I ultimately needed to take it into Photoshop. But I will show you how the spot removal tool works. When I select the tool um, and I use the wheel on my mouse, which will increase or decrease the size, and you can literally just paint over a spot, and then Lightroom's going to go and search for something that it wants to replace it with. And I can move the selection around and to where I'm happy with it. And when I let go, um, there it is. It's moved there. OK, so as I, then it gets a bit more tricky as I try to remove more of him. And I'll show you. And sometimes you'll see that Lightroom makes odd selections. And all you have to do is left click and pull and move the selection around to where you're happy with it. And again, you know, you can try and match things up and do the best that you can. Um, and when you're, when you're done with all of this, then all you need to do is hit done over here on the right and it will save your changes. Now you can always go back in, back into your history and to any point in, in your post-processing and move it back to a previous state. And when you do that, if you make a change, if I'm back in my history and I decide, oh, I want to change a setting here, it's going to wipe out the rest of this history here as if it never happened. Sometimes I do that and I don't want to. And what you can do is you can come back into the edit button and undo. And, and it will it, uh, reinstall your history up to the point that you want it to. Anyway. OK, so I was interrupted by the phone. Um, where was I? We were talking about the spot removal tool. At this point, um, what I am going to do is I'm going to show you what I did to import it into Photoshop, because that's where I did the remainder of my spot removal. So I literally, I, all I do is I right click on my mouse, and I bring up this, this menu, and it says Edit In. And I come over, and I pick from my menu. These are all programs that I have installed on my machine edit in Photoshop CS6. And I want to edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments. So I hit edit. And it's going to pull this in. And to increase the size on mine, I'm going to do my PC, Control plus will increase the size. Control minus will decrease it. And here's the, and here's the, um, the picture in Lightroom, or in Photoshop going to increase it a bit more and pull down and pull over to isolate this area. Now, there's a, there are a couple of tools um, that you can use or that I use. I'm not incredibly well versed in Photoshop, but when it comes to cloning and healing, I can do a pretty good job. I normally stick to cloning, but I'm going to show you the healing brush or spot healing brush tool. Um, and to pull up these menus, you right click on your mouse and, and then um, left click to select. So the spot healing tool, um, if I drag over a portion, it will kind of try and work its magic. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, but you see I'm just taking baby steps and it works things in here to pull things out. It's pulling in the gentleman's feet underneath here, so sometimes it's a bit funky. Um, and you keep working on this. And there's a point at which, when it stops working, um, that I will come in and I, and I will clone. Now let's see what happens when I get to the, to the bush. It, you know, it's doing a fair job. Okay, um, I'm not going to go through the whole, the whole thing here. You see the point. You see the point. But I worked on it and and really cleaned up this whole area between this and and I'll show you the cloning and actually. What I'll do is um, I'll, I'll try the cloning brush over here. That is this tool over here on the left. Again, right click to bring up the menu, left click to select. And I'm going to control plus again to blow up the area so I can work on it and pull down. And clone with clone, um, I have to select the area that I want um, Photoshop to clone from. And to do that in this area, you see that, that the brush that I've selected, the size of it is too big. And to decrease that, I just 
um, hit my left bracket key and it will decrease the size. The right bracket key will increase. Um, now here to select, I have to press Alt on my PC and I apologize, I don't know what that is on a Mac. Um, I think it's Command. But if I, I hit Alt and then I left click on the mouse and I have now made a selection to um, pull over. And as long as I, that little crosshair that you can see stays, that's, that is what Photoshop is pulling from. Um, if that crosshair gets into a different area, it's going to copy where the tone from where that crosshair um, comes from. Does that make sense? Here, let's see. Let me try here. I'm going to click from over here and see if I can get it to do. See, as I get it over here, well, I'm not demonstrating this very well, but let me continue to move on. Oh, see, there we go. See, the crosshair is down on the yellow, so it's going to pull in the yellow um, into the corrected area. So always keep an eye out for that crosshair. No. So anyway, and then I, I played with this a bit to make that uh, a, a bit more um, less obvious. And um, once I was done, I'm going to control minus. Here's the beauty again of Lightroom and Photoshop. What you do, you come up and you hit File, Save. And it's going to pull this directly back into Lightroom with the Photoshop edits. And let's let it work here. One of six. Well, that's it. And you can see right here. This is this is where it was, um, and with with the the yellow sticker removed. Now I'm going to go to the photo that I oh, let me find it. Okay. So this was the photo that I was left with after um, I edited it in Photoshop. So um, from here. I took this photo and I wanted to do some more post-processing with it. And I decided that I wanted to take it into a program called Nick Color Effects Pro. So I'm going to um, demonstrate that for you as well. So to get it into Color Effects Pro, I right click on my mouse and I pull up once again the menu, edit in, and this time Color Effects Pro. Select that and again edit a copy with Lightroom Adjustments, edit. And it's going to go to the program. It creates it creates a, another file um, that it will pull the adjustments into when it's done. Um, I have a demo, and I'm opening I'm opening the program. As you see, it's preparing the image, and it will pull it up. And there are a lot of different. And now this is a split image. Um, let me get rid of this filter that's in here. Um, there's different ways in Color Effects Pro that you can compare your image. Let's see if that will. There we go. Um, side by side, above and below, or just the full image. I tend to do the split view when I apply. Um, then I can slide this line back and forth, and I can see how it affects uh, how it affects the photo. So let's come back. And these are the listing of all the various um, filters that ColorFX Pro has. It is really an amazingly fun program, and you can get lost in here for hours just experimenting. One of my favorite ones, however, is this Dark and Light in Center. And if you click on, left click on these, um, on those little, little icons, it pulls up various um, uh, choices within, within the selection. And I typically go to, to um, maximum depth. However, as I look at as I look at my notes, it appears that I have I'm going to go back. Okay, pardon 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 me. I'm going to start someplace else first. Um, I'm going to go to something called Pro Contrast because I'm not sure I used um, the center. Let's see, Pro Contrast. Okay, I started here first. And um, I normally use dynamic contrast. It's just a, a favorite of mine. And it has preset settings. And if you watch as I pull this, it's, you know, oops, you can see it just, it 
it is. It's dynamic contrast. I love the effect it gives. Um, I did change a bit about it. The color cast um, I boosted to 40. And um, the dynamic contrast I, I boosted just a bit more to 70. And as I look at my notes, I don't have the reason why. Um, for some reason, when I did this, it, I decided to do that. But um, it's not that big of a change. Um, again, let me show you kind of the before and the after. So there we go. Now, to add a filter, um, you click Add Filter. And then I'm going to go back in. And I'm going to go back to the one I originally showed you, Dark and Light and Center. And click. And Maximum Depth is one that I like here as well. And it will apply um, the default. And you'll see that it darkens the edges and it lightens um, the center. Now I, of course, um, play with this. And you can change the shape of the highlighted portion. Uh, there's one and there's two. This is a, a longer um, longer area, and which I select for James Carousel. Um, and then I, it sets the center luminosity at 100. I pulled it down to about here because it was, it was way too bright. And then the border luminosity is way too dark. So I moved that up to about here. And then the center size, I increased it just a, uh, just a bit. And now here's the fun part. Well, let me come back here before and after. Okay. And the other thing you can do to, to you can toggle um, on and off the, uh, the effect by clicking on the, the check, bar, check mark. So you can see if I come into Pro Contrast and I remove that, you can see it just with the effect of the dark and light and center. But the combination of the two together is what I like. Now, the one thing with the dark and light and center, you can place the center. It, by default, places it in the center of the, um, the photo, but I'm going to click on it, left click, and place my um, the crosshairs over the carousel. And it, did you see it? It was very subtle. Let me try it again. I will move it way over here so you can see. I will left click to place it, and here it's highlighted the right-hand side of the picture. So back here, and I'm going to come back and probably move it about there. And I think that's about right. I could fuss with it a little bit more, but I'll leave it there. Um, the last filter that I applied is um, a graduated neutral density filter. And I'm going to click here. And I chose dark skies. Um, there was, I just wanted to give it a, just a little bit more punch. And let's see. Um, let's see what I look back at my notes and and 180. Well, that's interesting. Um, let me talk. Oh, see, now I made a mistake. I removed a filter because I didn't add filter. Um, I when I chose the new one, it wiped out the old. So I need to go back in and and add that back in. So bear with me. I'm sorry this is becoming a little bit long in the tooth, but I'm going to come back in and reselect maximum depth. Let me go back to my notes. Um, this was shape two. And um, this was the center luminosity was 37. And eight, or minus eight. And the center size. And place center there. OK. All right. So graduated neutral density filter. Now, um, as I look at this with fresh eyes, it seems to be a bit dark. Um, I'm going to go back in, and I'm going to tweak it just a bit. Upper tonality, um, I'm going to lighten it just a little, or maybe more than just a little to about there, and we'll leave it there. OK. So now that I'm done um, with what I want to do, I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to click Save. 
And once again, it's going to pull it back into Lightroom. Let me go back to Lightroom. And in this initial folder or file that it's set up, and it takes just a minute, there it is. Um, so from here was, let me see if I can backtrack. That was not, here's the original. Okay, I've got so many different copies here. This is after Photoshop, um, cloning and, and um, healing, getting rid of the extraneous uh, features. And then this is in Nick Effects, Nick Color Effects Pro. So there you have it. I hope you've enjoyed this week's video, albeit it's a, it's a bit long, but, um, uh, and I hope it wasn't too confusing, but it's amazing what could be done with that iPhone 6 photo, and I think um, my husband will be very happy and pleased. Anyway, um, if you have any questions, please ask in the comments section, and if you're viewing this on YouTube, you can see more post-processing videos and galleries of after-before photos by visit, visiting visualventuring.com and select after before Friday form in the menu. Thanks for watching.